how do you feel? Are you okay? Yes. Hopefully you're well. I am well, yes. I'm glad to say. <laughs> yeah, what's it like to live in the lockdown country, even if you are in a very elite and posh uh, shire like Buckinghamshire? <laughs> well, it, while it's comfortable, it's also very frustrating. I mean, you can't do things you've been doing all your life. My oldest daughter did come round the other day just to bring some food that we'd asked her to get. And we sort of we stood it at a distance away from each other. <laughs> Normally, I would hug and kiss her, but we can, we can't just can't do that at the moment. Yeah. They say you are in a uh, the in the group of high risk. Well, yes, I'm in, I'm in my seventies now, so therefore I'm technically high risk. Do you feel any I mean special care from the government? Um, considering you are belong to that uh, age group? I think the trouble is the problem is too big. It's, it's huge, it's overwhelming. And yes. there, just aren't the, yeah. there aren't really the facilities. Like, um, we'll take a simple thing like going shopping. You, there's huge queues at supermarkets or there's no nothing on the shelves. So for older people, it'd be better if they could have their groceries delivered to them. The problem is easing a little now yeah. in that there are no longer quite the big queues at supermarkets, but there just seem to be still queues outside the pharmacies if you want to get medicines. <laughs> uh, so you feel okay, but do you know anybody who contracted the virus? Yes, uh, my youngest daughter, who lives about 100 miles away in Derbyshire, her daughter became unwell, so the family had to isolate for, for at least a week. And, but... The How daughter. Old is she, she was just just coming up for five years old, but being a fit girl, she bounced back almost within two days. So, if they're fit and well and young, that you know, there's there's great hope that they can brush it aside quickly. One of our members at the club told told us last night that she's have to isolate for twelve weeks, so she's got it. But she was still able to take part in the meeting. She had to cough a bit. How is our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson? I hear he's in the hospital now. And yes. uh, considering that the Health Minister also is not well, who runs the country, bloody hell? Yeah, the Foreign Secretary is running the country at the moment. <laughs> we, we're told that um, they took Boris in as a precaution. And although he's in intensive care, he's not on is not on a ventilator so I, I think he's tough enough and hopefully he's going to pull through it fairly quickly right what yeah. about royal family the queen where is she the queen's at windsor castle she broadcast to the nation on sunday night they say about 28 million people watched her it must be tough for the queen i mean she had to, she was kept in windsor castle for six years during the second world war so it must feel like she's gone back to where she started again. <laughs> my friend Nina, yeah. she's American and works with me on my projects here. Um, she was quite impressed by the Queen's speech. So I would like oh. her to say a few words and just like I want to introduce to her as well. Hi, Roger. Hello, Nina. How are you? Well, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah. Very good. I've been outside this morning in the sunshine working in the garden. I watched this, the Queen's speech myself and I was very inspired by her words. And as a mom, I can't imagine the responsibility and the stress that she has dealing with a country, but also with her son being sick, doing better now, but. but yes, yeah, so he's, 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 I think he's fairly recovered now. Right. Yeah, yeah she seems so, um, calm and controlled it was very it was very nice to see her reaction yes. to people. i mean it's very it's very rare for her to broadcast to the nation it's only happened about four times so yes. you know, so it, she has a calming and reassuring presence she, yeah she really does um I, I hate that it took an event like this for us to see her like that but um yeah. I, maybe in the future she'll do more because it was it made it made a lot of people feel really good. You are an active Toastmaster, um, and uh, you meet online. Maybe you give us some fun tips how to make them more entertaining and uh, useful for people. Hmm. 
I, uh, I was asked to do the table topics last night. Mm -hmm. So I based it on the current crisis, but in a light-hearted way, and they actually liked that. They thought it worked well. So I, th I feel that's the way to do it. Just keep it light-hearted and cheerful. Can you uh, briefly tell me what was it like? <clears throat> what questions did you answer? Right. I asked one lady, for example, if you had to self-isolate with somebody, who would you choose to isolate? To which she replied, darling, I want to isolate with Paul Newman. <laughs> that, that made everybody laugh. <laughs> what the uh, I mean, main advantage of having online uh, meeting, in your opinion? It actually works quite well. Once you, get, once you start getting used to it, I mean, it's... I mean, we've always shaken hands. Now we just wave. <laughs> and, uh, tradition. I had to go to America and to London and um, all the events which I wanted to attend uh, were cancelled. But anyway, I was stranded in airports. Now we are in Thailand and I am a member of the, one of the clubs uh, in Northern mm. Thailand called Chiang Mai yeah. Toastmasters. I am a PR manager of the club. I would just well, say maybe yeah. as a distinguished Toastmaster, you would say some uh, few words of greetings to my club <laughs> members as well. Yes, I would very much like to visit Chiang Mai, but I'm afraid that's completely impossible at the moment. So I can offer you my welcome to, from, from England. I look forward to seeing you again one day, even if only online, and keep up the, keep the club going. It, it's it's encouraging for the members. They've got somebody they can talk to and meet with. And the Toastmasters serves a very valuable purpose. What mm. funny example from your Toastmasters experience, you know, which was just like mm. amazing, unforgettable for you. Oh dear, yes. Yes, more. <laughs> well, one speech I once made, everybody remembers that above all others for all the wrong reasons, because my trousers fell down during the middle of the speech. That was, that was actually part of the speech. <laughs> and I was wearing a very loud pair of shorts underneath them. Oh. For a long while, that was the only speech I ever made that anybody remembered. <laughs> it wasn't... <laughs> speech was about yes i was talking about short trousers see i hated short trousers as a boy all boys in 1950s had to wear them until you got to about 12 or 13. i hated it i was yearning to get me into proper trousers <laughs> at, at, that, at, at that particular moment during this uh, exactly a speech your pants fell fell down yes I was explaining that this magnificent garment, look at it, two pieces of material cleverly coming together at the top. And look at this, a, a zip, this wonderful piece of thing. See, one flick and it's open. The room started <laughs> laughing at that point. And then I just threw my arms out and they fell down. <laughs> you could pretend it was a plant. I had to pretend that it was an accident, you see. I wouldn't try and do I wouldn't try and do that speech now. I was a lot younger then. Oh. <laughs> I'm rather better looking. <laughs> I can't imagine. No. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, but what we can ask. Yeah, so definitely um we look forward uh for your visit to Chiang Mai to Thailand. <laughs> yeah. I would and love to do definitely it. I would like to invite you to one of our online meetings. Next meeting is on the twelfth of April. Thank you, Roger, for this very wonderful interview. It was very nice to see you again. Um, yeah. So yeah. please stay healthy, stay in touch. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Bella. Look after yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs>